We're back again. This is Podcast Salmonella, and I'm here with a special guest today instead of Teresa. It's just me, uh, Tim, and who am I with? Uh, hey, my name's Chris. His name is Chris. <laughs> and uh, Chris is a friend of mine. We've been friends for a little bit now, and I thought it'd be cool to get him on the podcast and get his opinions on things that are going on uh, in movies and geek stuff in general. Uh, tell him a little bit about yourself if you want to. Um, well, I'm originally from San Antonio, mm -hmm. worked in music for a few years. Uh, my big passions are music and movies, uh, retro games and toy collecting, mm -hmm. uh, you know, typical geekery. What, but, uh, what, is, what do you do in music? Uh, well, I used to work for a few of my favorite bands and um, kind of had a, had a hand in everything, mm -hmm. uh, merchandise, tour, touring, social media, websites, web stores, so kind of covered everything it was cool it was a good time good like seven years excellent yeah excellent it's fun well i guess the first thing we should talk about today um uh, because we just got home from seeing it uh was creed oh yeah <laughs> wow that movie was fantastic yeah i uh, you know i'm not a huge fan of the rocky movies like you know i'm not a diehard fan i like them yeah i actually uh, a few years ago i watched them all back to back but I wasn't, I don't know, I just wasn't like, oh, I, you know. And then I saw Rock, Rocky Balboa, and I really liked that. So when Creed was coming along, I wasn't going, oh, this is going to be really good. But then I, then the buzz started building about how good it was going to be, and I was like, oh, okay, i got to see it now. So Yeah, I I grew up watching them. I mean, I I love them. Like I'm not like a huge like diehard fan of them, but I do enjoy them. And it's funny because like, I'm not a sports guy at all. But uh, the one thing I really liked about the Rocky movies was that it wasn't very heavily centric on the boxing. Like, those mm. were the main aspect of the movies, but yeah. a lot of it was more character-based. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's kind of what really had me enjoying those movies. Same thing with, like, Creed. Like, it really, like, it's its own thing, but it feels like it belongs in with the rest of those movies. And Yeah. It's weird because you wa you're watching it, and it's like... You know, uh, it's its own thing, but it's still a Rocky movie. Oh, yeah, totally. You know? And that's what I really, really dug about it. Like, you could watch this along with the rest of the series, and it would still fit in perfectly with those. It was, it was a good time. I didn't expect to like it as much as I did. I really liked um, I liked everyone's performances. Of course, Stallone is great in it. Oh, yeah, he you was... Know. He was the highlight of that movie. Like I, I, re I didn't look too much into Creed just because at the time I was just like, oh, I, you know, I don't really care all that much. Yeah, that's how kind of how I felt yeah. when I first heard about it. And I thought like Stallone was just gonna have like a, a cameo if anything, or yeah, like maybe yeah, an extended yeah, yeah. cameo. But I, yeah, he, uh, yeah, he was like, pretty much throughout the whole movie, and it was, it made the movie that much better. He had an integral role, and yeah, in a, yeah. And he had something that it wasn't just him being his trainer, but it was also something about his character, and you know, yeah. it's important to the story too. You know, so yeah, really um, great. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. It's oh, absolutely, still playing in theaters. I know we're seeing it a little late. Yeah, but you know, what can you say? <laughs> I, I I chose instead last time to see Krampus. Yeah, which you haven't seen yet. I haven't seen it. I hear it's I hear it's a good time. Krampus, it was excellent. It's it, it was like. Uh, I described it as like a Jumanji, but Christmas. Okay. A Christmas Jumanji, but with like a hard-edged PG-13 sort of edge. Kind of like Gremlins, I yeah, guess. Yeah, like, and also it felt like an episode of Tales from the Crypt a little bit to me okay, as right well. Okay, So it, it was really great. Go out and support that because that one, that one is really good. Yeah, I gotta go see that. Yeah, it's really good. Probably next weekend if I can. Uh, trailers this week. We've seen quite a few trailers drop over the week. Uh, we saw the trailer for the new X-Men uh, what's it called? Apocalypse. Apocalypse? Yeah. Yeah. And, eh. Yeah, I kind of felt the same way. I was just kind of like, well, that that doesn't look great, but I mean, 
I'll see it. Yeah, I mean, and I don't want to sound like I'm, I'm not. I don't support the X Men movies. I really like the X Men movies. All that I've seen, I even liked aspects of the really shitty Wolverine one, <laughs> uh, but not everything because it was shitty. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I just kind of like at this point, with everything I've seen in the past year, Fury Road, Creed, yeah. uh, all these really good movies. It, it just feels like eh, another superhero movie. Yeah, I'm kind of over superhero movies really. Like after seeing stuff like. Uh, Ex Machina and Kamiko the Treasure Hunter. I'm just kind of like, you know, I'm I'm really superheroed out. And we talked about this earlier today, but mm-hmm. I, I'm just really sick of cinematic universes, mm-hmm. especially Marvel. Like, I'm not a big superhero person, but I do like the movies. They're fun, you know, action flicks. And But I'm tired of investing in these I, shared I universes. I don't mind Marvel cinematic universes. I don't mind that DC is building their own cinematic universes. What mm-hmm. I, what I uh, find... Um, a little troublesome is when they try to make a cinematic universe out of anything now. Like yeah. they're trying to make a Ghostbusters cinematic universe. Yeah, they tried that with Spider-Man and that kind of ruined that franchise. Yeah. Or, but they, the reboot of it anyway. Everybody's trying to be Marvel and a yeah. Marvel success and rightly so I guess because they're trying to find ways to make money but yeah. sometimes the project Ghostbusters all it is is just a simple comedy premise. Mm-hmm. There's nothing that lends itself to make it a cinematic universe. No way. I mean... Forget that the, that's an all-female cast. I don't care about that. That's oh, not, yeah. That has it, nothing to do with that it. That has nothing to do with it. It's it's the fact that they're trying to horn in on something that doesn't need to be horned in on. Yeah, and also, too, it's just totally unnecessary. It's like, you know, it's a huge franchise based off of two movies and a relatively good animated series. Mm. But, you know, you don't really need to go any farther than that. It doesn't justify a reboot like i get why it's the brand it's ghostbusters like that name alone it's gonna sell tickets but it's just like you don't need to do that like you know come up with something new like yeah it's just really really unnecessary and i mean i'll I'll go see it i'm i'm curious i'm not like gung-ho about it i'm it's interesting like it's the same thing with what they did with like robocop and i think there's potential there but i'm not gonna get my hopes up about it so it's just one of those things where it's like, we'll see what happens with it. I don't think they're going to do a shared universe situation with it. There's talk about it, but mm. I don't think they're going to do that. It just, it, it, yeah. that type of franchise doesn't lend it to itself to something like that. So I don't think so either. But we'll see. We'll see. It may turn out to be a really great movie and they can do something with it. Yeah, I, you know what? I, I, I don't know. You know, I hope it's a good movie. I hope it's funny. I hope it's fun and I hope it's a good time. I don't want sequels. I don't want anything further than that. I just want like a good time at the movies. Yeah. So. That's all I care about. Yeah, pretty much. That's all I, so I, all I care about about the Star Wars thing. We were talking mm-hmm. about that earlier. It's yeah. like, I <clears throat> really love the original trilogy and mm-hmm. don't care for the prequels. And I don't care about the merchandising, the parodies, all right. of that stuff. All I want is a good Star Wars movie. Mm-hmm. Or even just a good movie, period, to come out of that franchise. That's, yeah. that's all I want. If I can get that, I'm happy. You know. Well, I can't say too much about Star Wars because that will start a whole conversation. <laughs> no, I and know. <laughs> we have that one already. So yeah. Probably best not to get into that. It's probably not best to get into yeah. an, uh, uh, a discussion about Star Wars with someone who's never even seen the movies before. Though. Well, there's a reason for that. I yeah. just I want to see them on my own terms, and I will watch them at some point, but now is not the time. I think that's probably the best way to say it. Yeah. But... And it, it, Especially if you're sick of the hype right now, the way yeah. it is. Well, I mean, it's not even so much sick of the hype. It's just, it's very oversaturated right now. Oh, and I yeah, just, absolutely. I cannot listen to that theme music. I can't listen to the sound of a lightsaber blasting you, up or whatever. You it's, can't walk into a store without seeing a, a Star Wars something for sale. Yeah. You can't watch television without something. Even like Polaroid commercials have Star Wars stuff in them right now. So, I mean, it, it's oh, yeah. just, it's unavoidable. You're going to run into Star Wars something in any aspect of your life, no matter what, unless you just lock yourself in the bathroom. Yeah, pretty much. You know, otherwise you're going to run into it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but besides that, we got off track a little bit. We were talking <laughs> about trailers. Uh, let's see, what other trailers did this? Oh, uh, the trailer for the new uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movie that's coming out. Yeah, yeah. And you have, you, um, well, I'll just say this. I, I don't, I don't <laughs> want to make it sound one-sided. Uh, I was a, I was a big Ninja Turtles fan when I was a kid. Yeah. I watched the cartoons. I watched all the movies. I had the action figures. And I go out and support 
the movies just because, I don't know, it's sort of like being a kid again. Mm -hmm. You go out, and I've seen all the movies in theaters, I'll go out and see the new one, no matter what the quality of it's going to be. Yeah. Uh, But this, the trailer for this latest one, oh, man. (laughs) It's hard to defend, and I don't want to. I'll say this about the new trailer. Like, I think the movie looks awful, but I don't have completely negative things to say about it, because... Anybody who knows me knows that I'm a huge Ninja Turtles fan. It's, you know, some people grew up with, like, Transformers and He-Man and, Mm. you know, superhero stuff like Batman and Superman. And for me, mine was always Ninja Turtles. That was just something that grabbed me for some reason, and it's always stuck with me to this day. And it's probably not just a nostalgia thing, but that is one of those things where it's like, that is my reminder of childhood. So that's why... I do have good things to say about this trailer. I still think the movie looks awful, but with this trailer, it's still got a lot of the problems. It's trying too hard. It's being way too big for its britches. It's kind of that situation, but the huge explosions, the huge budget, all the things that they're trying to do with it. But I will say this about the trailer. It looks like a more fun movie than the last one because the last one didn't know what it was trying to be anyway. Like, it was trying to cater to the nostalgia. It was trying to cater to the adults that grew up with the franchise back in the 80s and 90s. But it was also trying to reach the new audience who's, you know, the new kids who are watching the new show. So it's trying to reach everybody. So it didn't know if it was trying to be too serious, trying to be too fun. And with this movie, it looks like they picked the things that worked from the last movie, which wasn't much, but they got a lot of feedback and they're working off of that feedback. And I think that's why this trailer looks a lot more fun than the last movie. It's got a lot more of the jokes. It's a lot more colorful. Mm-hmm. Um, like, even the, the design of the turtles, like, they still look terrible. But they're, they are a lot softer looking. Like, the nostrils and the lips, like, they dialed that stuff down a little bit. Mm-hmm. They're not too overcluttered with gear and clothing. It's still there, but it's not as distracting and obnoxious. I don't know. I didn't get that. Uh, I, still feel, I feel like they look the same. They don't look much different to me. Well, again, I, I went like kind of geek mode on it. I did, <laughs> I did some con- comparisons, and mm. uh, they there are some definite redesigns. Like, some of the characters don't look as bulky. Mm. I mean, they still look huge and obnoxious, but it's not as bad. But they're also taking a lot of, like, fan criticisms. Like, it seems like this movie is really kind of like a live action version of the 80s show in the sense that like okay the turtles are now out in the open and in public now it's a lot more jokey it's a lot more fun in tone you've got like their new turtle van you've got casey jones and baxter stockman and the biggest one bebop and rocksteady which Mm. you know i originally said like there were two things i really liked about the trailer one was the use of uh it's Tricky by Run DMC until they remixed it, yes. which was awful. But the other thing was Bebop and Rocksteady, and that's because they were a huge staple of the original cartoon show. Mm-hmm. And when we were kids, like we wanted to see, we were most familiar with that show. Yeah. We wanted to see those characters on the big screen, and we never got that with the original movies. I, th- I think so too, because you, uh, you watch those original movies, and the only thing that really carries over... From the movies is the Turtles, Splinter, April O'Neil, and Shredder, and Casey Jones. Yeah, sort of. and the humor. You've and the humor. humor. But I mean, as far as characters. Oh, yeah. 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 You, you get, there's no Dimension X, there's no Krang. Yeah. There's no Bebop or Rocksteady. There's no, Definitely not. There's no Baxter Stockman. Yeah. So you have like, let's see, one, two, three, four, five movies without any of that stuff in it. And then suddenly they just cram it all into yeah. one movie. Yeah, and... It's, it's interesting because that's kind of the thing that we all always wanted to see as kids. And that's, it looks like that's what they're doing in this movie. Like, But it feels too late. Um, you know, it feels like, why didn't they do that, you know, 10, 20 years ago? Yeah. When, when it was still lively and fresh. Now it's just like, we've heard the feedback, so we're going to throw all this stuff in there, but we're still going to make a shitty movie. Well, there were reasons at the time, like even when Secret of the Ooze was being made, they wanted to have Bebop and Rocksteady in mm. the movie, but... Because Fred Wolf Studios, they were like doing the, they were like the production company behind the animation, mm-hmm. the animated show. Uh, they held the rights to specific characters for the cartoon. Oh, they didn't want to let 
the filmmakers use the characters Bebop and Rocksteady, and that's why we got that makes sense. Toka and Razar. Because you know, right. even as kids, like we all wanted them to be Bebop and Rocksteady, and it wasn't like yeah, we had two giant villain mutants, but it just wasn't them, and that's really why. Didn't they have action figures of Toka and Razar? Yeah, they did. They even yeah. appeared in a couple of episodes of the original the, no, I show. don't remember that I just <laughs> I just remember them from the movies but. yeah they even popped up in like the Turtles in Time video game uh, mm. as well uh, I and, played the shit out of that first yeah. Turtles game and I played the shit out of the arcade game oh yeah too. those were like yeah. must like that first game I mean I have it right here on my yeah. shelf yeah. along with the arcade Nintendo version and I have it at home too yeah those were just you go to like a pizza place or a movie theater and you just throw quarters in it and just mm-hmm play with like three other kids it was at a grocery store when I played it I had to play it on my own because there was nobody else to play it with (laughs) there was a grocery store in the town that I lived in back home and they had they had that arcade machine set up and we and they knew where to put it too yeah it was right there by all the 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 front lanes okay so you're there with your kid right and your kid sees that machine and it's like give me some quarters give me some quarters you know (laughs) and that's that's exactly what i did and i'd go over there and play until my mom would say okay we've got to go it's like but i'm still i i'm still on a quarter yeah i I haven't finished you know but yeah my experience was always like oh it's a friend or family member's birthday party and it's at a pizza joint or oh we're going to see a movie you know let's kill some time before the movie or after the movie and throw quarters in the the turtles arcade machines and yeah. that i mean that's that's ninja turtles that's that's childhood right there like yeah. the original movies like that first movie is it's kind of timeless a i think bit. so well it, it a is bit. it's a little bit i mean you, you've got the 90s music and the yeah. clothing styles and stuff but that movie is really really well done and mm-hmm. i respect it because you know, you've got the great Jim Henson animatronics that look amazing. Mm-hmm. You've got, you know, real martial artists in those heavy, hot costumes doing all these great fight sequences and stunts. And that takes a lot of work that you don't get in now. Like, you watch that compared to, like, even the trailer for the new movie. And the new movie is just, like, CGI crap. Like, you just don't buy any of it. But here's the original 90 movie where you've got people in suits doing mm-hmm. all of this stuff on film in hot, heavy costumes. And I respect that a lot more. I love oh, that yeah. first movie. Absolutely. That first movie's great. And also backed by a production company that was no- no- known primarily for making kung fu movies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that. I mean, the first Turtles movie was like the biggest independent, independent movie yeah. until like what was it? Blair Witch. Blair Witch, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean that's pretty amazing because Halloween was for a long time, and then and then it was I want to say then it was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and then a few years later it was the Blair Witch. Yeah, that sounds about right. I, I think I think that's the way it was, and now it's, it's something else. What is it now? Oh, something gosh. Eclip- something eclipsed it. I don't remember what it was. Oh, I don't know. It might have been one of the Paranormal Activity movies. Maybe. That would make sense. Yeah. Maybe, I'm not sure, but I, in any case, yeah, that first movie is really great, and I wish. Now that new line has folded into Warner Brothers, and uh, they would finally see the light and do right and put out a special edition of that first movie. That would be cool. There's a German one. I mean, I'll be happy if they just port the German one for you know Region One Blu-ray or DVD. And the, and the director matter. Steve Barron, he has he's he's gone on record as saying he would love to take part in a special edition of that movie. I even heard that there was like he did have material for like a director's cut. Mm-hmm. And that would be pretty amazing to see because, I mean, there's a great documentary called Turtle Power. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not completely definitive, but, like, if you want a good, like, introduction to, like, the history of Ninja Turtles, it takes you up throughout the first movie. And there's a lot of footage in that documentary from the first movie that I've never seen before. Yeah. Some of it I've seen, but some of it I'm just like, where is all that stuff? I want to see all of it. You know, you've got this great scene with Shredder just kneeling down and he has a bunch of foot sh- soldiers like attacking him, and he's just fighting them off w- with his hands, not moving or anything. It's pretty yeah. cool. I would love to see that stuff. Yeah, it's yeah. really rad. Uh, but yeah, they uh, they they put out a German DVD, and all, the only thing that was on it was a comment audio commentary from the director, and the additional ending. Yeah. It's, like, it's like the ending on top of the ending. That comic was, book thing or whatever. Yeah, the tag. Yeah, yeah. which but, I'm glad they cut out. Yeah, yeah. it's. It's cute, but it's cute. Highly unnecessary. Highly unnecessary. I think the movie ended perfectly with them saying "Calabunga" on the 
rooftop and then yeah the great, whole movie built to that climax and, yeah and everything after that is just unnecessary yeah you don't need anything else yeah. start playing turtle power by partners in crime and right you're good i love that song by the oh, way i remember being at uh i think it was at my grandfather's house and i was watching night tracks anybody remember night tracks besides me that came, sounds familiar came on tbs it was it was their version of mtv oh I don't remember it was that. the only it, we didn't have mtv where i lived it was okay. the only way to watch music videos for me okay and uh yeah and i would just i would wait for that to come on so i could watch it and i was very happy when it did <laughs> the name sounds familiar, but I don't remember the format yeah. of the show or anything. It so. came on at like, I don't know, it started at midnight and ran until like five in the morning yeah. or something like that. Okay. So. It's funny. I remember that uh, Partners in Crime song as a kid, and I was like, this isn't the Ninja Turtles theme song because we were all so hooked on the cartoon. Right. But after a while, was, you know, it didn't take too long. That song like quickly grew on me, but I was like, you know what? This is a, this is a good song altogether. It, it's dated, but you know, yeah. it, it's still a great song. I, and, uh, uh, Richard Usher, the singer of that song, he's still mm. out there doing stuff. He's still like involved in the Ninja Turtles community. I met him last year uh, at this big, crazy Ninja Turtles Vanilla Ice party, and he was super cool. <laughs> and uh, he performed the Turtle Power song on stage, and I missed it because awesome. uh, I was handling the Vanilla Ice table merch table that we were running at the party. You so I missed him. It. Did you have like tons of work to do? Uh, well, so what happened was. <laughs> So the story behind this is this guy named Jared in Dallas, he was turning like 32 or 33 or something, and he wanted to throw this huge party where it was going to be like Vanilla Ice, Coolio, and like the Ninja Turtles. Mm -hmm. And so he crowdfunded it, and he started making so much money that he started adding like other acts and, you know, all this other like all these other crazy things to the party. Like were, he was going to have like a giant Nerf battle. He mm -hmm. was going to have an arcade uh, he was going to have like a whole bunch of other guests. Like he had, um, digital underground, the, uh, Humpty Dance guys. <laughs> uh, he had, uh, he couldn't get Coolio. He got Vanilla Ice. He got, um, Tone Loke. The, Tone uh, Loke. yeah, he did the Wild Thing song, Uncle Buck. Uh, he was super nice. He got this guy who like had this crazy, awesome Robocop cosplay. He was like in character the whole night. Uh, he got... It's too bad he couldn't get Technotronic. Nya King K. There you go. That would have been awesome. <laughs> uh, he got, um... He got, um... Oh, why am I blanking on her name? Uh, Claudia Wells. Uh, she played Marty's uh, girlfriend, right, Jennifer, in right. the first Back to the Future. She was there. He got Kevin Eastman, uh, one of the co-creators of Ninja Turtles, to be there. This guy who has this crazy, awesome, screen-accurate replica... Well, it's not a replica. It's an actual, like, turtle van from the 80s show. Mm. He, like, booked the draft house for two nights to show the first Ninja Turtles movie and the second Ninja Turtles movie, uh, like, on film, on the big screen. And uh, it was pretty amazing. But anyway, I'm going on a tangent. Yeah, <laughs> that's fine. Anyway, a friend of mine, he... Uh, a friend of mine named Brent, he, ha he became, like, obsessed with Vanilla Ice and started collecting all this merchandise. Like, I think he has, like, 30-something Vanilla Ice dolls now. Oh, poor guy. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of awesome. <laughs> uh, but he reached out to... Jared, who was throwing that Ninja Turtles party, he's like, hey, I wanted to send you these pictures of the of my Vanilla Ice collection. And the guy, Jared, was like, hey, I want you to come to the party and display all this stuff. Would you be willing to do that? So we just set up this table uh, just to display all of the merchandise. Like, they're, like, import CDs, T-shirts, bootlegs, mm. uh, posters, promotional photos. And people kept thinking we were selling merchandise. And we were just like, no, no, we're just showing it because you know vanilla ice is here you know we it's just kind of like a throwback we want people to see all this cool vintage merchandise yeah. and uh so while partners in crime are doing their turtle power song i'm just i was there at the table not realizing it was going on because i didn't know when it was going to start Thought and you were just, in 1990 for a second yeah it kind of was <laughs> like yeah. everybody at that party you know they were kind of in our age group like uh they grew up with the stuff they had like power rangers cosplayers they had Ghostbusters cosplayers like they had the 18 van the Ecto-1 the DeLorean like it was a total like 80s and 90s party crazy like, it was awesome it was one of the coolest things I've ever been to but uh and yeah it's all just because of you know Ninja Turtles I they guess. could have put that on the DVD or a special edition DVD of Lindsay and Ninja Turtles just to just because yeah yeah anything I would take anything because you know for years like the only way you could look at some of the behind the scenes stuff was a tape that they yeah. put out uh, right when uh, 
Turtles 2 came out mm-hmm. in theaters, and it was called Behind the Shells. I think that's what it's called. And it mainly covered the history of the comics and the Turtles 2 movie. And yeah, that's all it covered. The making. It was like a promotional item or something. And I was like, or... I want to hear about what is touted on the front of the box as being uh, the, the most, uh, uh, the, the, the biggest box office uh, <laughs> independent movie ever made. Yeah. I want to hear about the making of that. And for years, nothing. And then that Turtle Power documentary came out, yeah. and then they did like a snippet. Where they talked about it. There's like so. a chunk of it. Um, oh, a chunk of it. Yeah, but still. I mean, if you want a lot of information about the first movie, that's the Turtle Power documentary is mm. really where to go for that stuff. Yeah. Uh, it's really well done. I, I same with uh, the Masters in the Universe movie that they did. Yeah, I've I've always wanted a making of documentary, and they <laughs> did a documentary on. Uh, I want to say it was Mattel. Hmm. Or I, something along those lines, and they 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 dedicated like a twenty or thirty minute chunk of the documentary. Well, it's funny. So the making of Masters, Masters of the Universe. It's funny you mention that because the same uh, guys who did the Turtle Power documentary, they're mm. currently working on a Masters of the Universe documentary. So the same way they did the Turtle one, they're going to like cover the history. So I'm Maybe sure. the same people. Uh, what? It may be the same people. Yeah, it is it the same Maybe the same thing. Yeah, they're, uh, yeah. I'm sure they're going to touch on the movie. And... No, I mean, what I saw was probably from that documentary because oh, that's maybe. all I saw was a snippet from that. Okay, okay. Yeah, so. What was it called? Toy Masters? Uh, I can't remember what their uh, company is called right now. I may be getting documentaries mixed up in my head. Maybe. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, going back to that Ninja Turtles trailer, I mean, it seems like they're re- they really are trying to touch on that 80s animated series movie that we all wanted as kids. And, and the turtle van. Did the toy shoot they did things have a, out of the front of it? They did have a toy like that, but it shot out pizzas. It didn't shoot yeah. out manhole covers. When I saw that, I thought, that's familiar. Was that from the show, or was that from the toys? Or you Yeah. Know, and that's, I couldn't remember. And that's why, like, I say the movie looks awful, but in a lot of ways, it does look better than the first movie. It's not going to be a good movie. I don't think it is. Mm. But they are kind of giving us what we wanted, and I'm okay with that. Like, I, I'm going to be there opening night, because I've seen all the Turtles movies in theaters, uh, you know, I, I'm kind of obligated to cause I'm just a fanboy. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it'll be cool to see that on the big screen. Cause I've been wanting to see Bebop and Rocksteady in a Turtles movie since I was a child. Mm-hmm. And now here we are all these years later and it's finally happening. And you know, they don't look horrible, you know, except for like the really awful CGI, right. but there they are. Like I gotta admit when I saw them in the trailer, I, it may be unfinished CGI too. Yeah, that yeah. too. But when I saw them in the trailer, I got mm. excited because I was like, "There they are! Like, they're they're gonna be on the big screen. We mm. might get Krang. Well, we're getting Krang. They're gonna be. In, he's gonna be in the probably. Movie. It's probably they're probably saving that one. No, because I. No, I mean not. I'm saving. Not going to put him in the trailer. I mean. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's in the movie. I mean that portal in the <coughs> sky. It's that's, clearly Dimension X. That's Dimension yeah. X. There's been a lot of talk of like those flying things in the trailer Mm -hmm. those are pieces of the technodrome and it's going to like build itself in the city and uh, you know what i'm and then there's medea his baxter stockman (laughs) yeah baxter stockman looks terrible like i've always thought of baxter and i don't care that he's black it doesn't i I don't care it's not that's not what it is for me i'm not a racist person well that's how i've always imagined baxter stockman as like a little guy yeah that is picked on a lot uh, in the comics, he was a pretty uh, he was a pretty devious villain. Like, yeah, uh, I know you said you wanted to read the comics, but I don't know if you want kind of like a plot point for his first uh, his first like appearance. But his first appearance in the comics is he was going to destroy the World Trade Center. Oh Lord! And yeah, I mean the yeah. guy was a pretty like devious villain in the comics, and in the cartoon he was just kind of like a silly you know, goofy villain character. Yeah, but I've always, I've always pictured him as like a small guy who's picked on like, right. kind of, the, anyone that's familiar with uh, Gotham, the TV <clears> show <throat> right now, they have a version of the Riddler on there that they're doing, uh, Edward Nigma. That's Baxter Stockman to me, a guy who's just kind of <laughs> put upon that he's underneath, he's boiling with rage and everything until finally it just all comes out. Yeah, you know, he's, he's kind of like that. Uh, yeah. It was more like, well, in the original comic, his whole story was he created the Mausers mm-hmm. and they were going to rid New York of the rat problem. Mm-hmm. And he 
behind closed doors, he was like reprogramming these Mausers to like rob banks and, you know, pull heists for him. And then it just got to the point where he just decided to hold, you know, New York for ransom and say, hey, yeah. look, if you guys don't pay me this money, I'm going to destroy the World Trade Centers with my robots. And uh, that's the kind of character he was. Uh, and this, the trailer really has him just being cartoony and silly. And yeah, it, that's why I was like, oh no, yeah. he's going to be the comic relief. And kind I kind of, of thought, yeah. they could have done that in the first movie. And then the second movie, he goes full on. Uh, evil or evil, evil, you know, in the in the second because you want the second chapter to be darker than the first. Yeah, but again, like with that first movie, it's they didn't. It seemed like well, they didn't know what they were doing. They didn't know if they wanted oh, this to be dark. Not. And, yeah, ex- exactly. That's why he wasn't in the yeah, first movie. Yeah, and I yeah. think with the feedback that came from that movie, the filmmakers said, okay, well, we need to give the people what they want. You know, if they want these characters, if they want this kind of tone that's what we're going to give them. And that's why I say this movie looks a lot more fun than the last one. But again, it just doesn't look like a good movie. They didn't listen to all the feedback though because Megan Fox is still in it. Well, they already, you know, took the first steps with the movie. So that's what they're building off of. So I get that, you know, the turtles are still going to look awful. You know, you're still going to have these same actors and there's nothing that can be done about that. Like you can't immediately just reboot that and say, okay, well, we, you can cast a new April and still have the same turtles. In it. Yeah, you can, but you kind of need that star power too. And I mean, I guess no, they, eh. no. I think the property is popular enough that I don't think you need star power. Yeah, but they're not going to do that. You need cause... Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> oh. That's what you need in this movie to make it successful. Oh, yeah, let's yeah. hope that doesn't happen again. And also, um, what's the guy's name from Arrested Development? Will Arnett. You need Will yeah. Arnett. To make this movie successful. I think they're going to dial all of that back. I hear the Turtles are going to be front and center for this movie. Which no. I'm totally fine with. Because you look at what they did with the Transformers movies. And man, those are bad movies. Like, mm-hmm. the Transformers are not the stars of their own movie. And that's horrible. I mean, those movies are horrible in general. But that's also just Noise like is the star of that movie. <laughs> yeah. Visual and, uh, and oral. Noise. It's just constant noise. Yeah, I mean, there's so many things wrong with those movies. But... You know, you know, when I saw that... a freaking podcast about what's wrong with them. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, when I saw that first Ninja Turtles <clears throat> reboot, I mean, the recent one, mm-hmm. I sat there in the theater, and I wasn't mad at the movie. I was just kind of sitting there like, this is a whole lot of nothing that I'm watching, and it's not making me mad. It, I'm just disappointed, because this could have been something really cool, and it just wasn't. And with the Transformers movies, I watched those movies, like upset like those movies are insulting like the second movie the whole time i watched it i just felt like michael bay was just giving me the finger yeah. and counting his money yep. while i watched it pretty and much at least the ninja turtles movie it was a bad movie but it didn't affect me the way that like it wasn't as insulting as the transformers movies were i, I was insulted by megan fox being in it. i really <laughs> was just for and it's not just because i think megan fox is not a good actress I think it's ins- it's insulting in the way that you look at that character. Yes, definitely. Uh, you look at that character as like a Lois Lane type, where if you find her sexy, you find her sexy <laughs> in spite of her in spite of her character, right? You like you look at Megan Fox, and she's clearly there for sex appeal only. Oh yeah, I mean you look at that new Ninja Turtles trailer, and she's in it a couple of times, and one of the main shots is just like her showing her cleavage and tummy. Yeah. It's like. That's not necessary for April no. O'Neil. April O'Neil is, you know, the friend to the turtles. She gets herself in the adventure. She gets herself in the adventure, and she's, she's a she's along for the ride. You know, she's the turtles' contact to the outside world. Right. And in this, it's just like, well, we need to get eye candy in this movie, and that's not what April O'Neil is. And she's, kids and kids are going to see these movies. They don't care about that stuff. And if you're putting it in there to get the broadest appeal possible, you didn't need that back in 1990. Yeah. They, they made a very dark movie, and we could fucking handle it. Yeah, and the original April O'Neil in the 90 movie, she didn't need to be, like, sexualized. She was... No. She had a lot of great lines. She was really funny. She was a cool and interesting character. Mm-hmm. You know, she would get in on the action. And she challenged She challenged her, her system. Yeah. Megan and, Fox is just... It just comes to them, and, you know... Uh, what it is is that it was like she, she <clears throat> is giving everybody a hard time about uh, giving the cops a hard time about not keeping the streets clean enough and 
and giving the reason for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles to come to the surface, you know, more yeah. or less. But, uh, uh, Megan Fox, all she, all she is doing is just saying, oh, there are turtles living in the sewers and everybody thinks she's crazy. There's nothing There's nothing there. Well, also, too, like with the first uh, rebooted movie, um, I'm just going to call it like the two, the 2014 movie, but mm. with the 2014 movie, they try to incorporate her way too much, which... You know, they tried to incorporate her into the origin of the Turtles. You know, she was the one to give the blow to Shredder at the end of the movie, which was total crap. Yep. Um, they were just trying way too hard. And it was just like the Transformers thing. It's like, yeah, you're a good character, but we're here for the Turtles. We're here for the Transformers. We're not here for you. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're an, you're, you're an important part to this story, but you're not that important. Like, they kept trying to shove whatever this version of April O'Neil was down Shut our throats. Shove titties in your face. That's what they were yeah, trying to I do, mean, th that's, basically. I mean, that's the whole thing. They're trying yeah. to make her an interesting April O'Neil character, but at the same time, during one of the big action sequences, she's like leaning out the window to see what's going on, and you've got Vern checking out her ass. And it's yeah. just like, okay, so this is what you really think of this character. Like, I don't think that there's fundamentals there for a good character. Uh, there could be, but they already ruined it so bad in the, in the 2014 movie. It's just like... It's going to be really hard to redeem that. And with that tummy and cleavage shot that was so important, we needed to throw that in the trailer. Right. I don't think they're going to do that. That's a trailer thing, though, too. That's the way they cut trailers nowadays. If yeah. If there's anything remotely sexual in a movie, they're going to put it in the trailer. Well, because I mean, they think that's what people want to go see. Well, it's not even so much just like the sexual stuff. It's just pandering to the lowest common denominator. It's like, oh, okay, yeah. we need to throw in the explosion. We need to throw in the cheap one-liner. We need to ch throw in you know, the eye candy, and it's just like, you know... And the music, the latest. Yeah, you've, yeah. you've got to have more faith in your product to say, we can show better than this, because this is not representative of what a movie could or should be. The tra I'm not surprised, though, the things that are in the trailer are in the trailer. I'm not surprised... Yeah, I wasn't either. I'm not surprised that the turtle van is there shooting uh, shooting manhole covers. Mm -hmm. I'm not surprised Bebop and Rocksteady are in there. I'm not surprised that Baxter Stockman is in there, because that's their way of saying, hey... We're doing better. But yeah, not that's really. that's the thing. Like you've got the in the first movie. One thing that I found interesting was that in the first movie, and this kind of goes back to the whole April O'Neil thing. But you've got Michelangelo having a huge turtle boner for April. I mean, mm -hmm. one of the first things he says about her is, "Hey guys, I got dibs," which is and also too actually one of the first things he says is, "She's making my shell tight." So it's like, okay, great turtle boner joke in the movie, right? Like, you know, I mentioned, I made that as a joke, but I forgot they actually said that in the movie, which is <laughs> awful. But, like, oh. that was the thing, in, the interesting thing about this new trailer. Like, they were showing us, hey, we listened to all your feedback. Because, like, when she meets Casey Jones, and it obviously, show, it obviously shows she has an interest in Casey, when Michelangelo appears and realizes this, he doesn't get jealous. He doesn't, like, say anything about it. Like, he quickly switches tone, and he's like, oh, so you guys are a thing, like, okay, like, I'm not gonna be, like, gross, creepy, perverted, like, you know, Mikey about this, like, I'm just gonna let that go, and I think they're probably gonna ditch that, which yeah. I hope so, because that was, you know, the way Mike, Michelangelo's been portrayed in the past has not really been that great, because he's the goofball, lovable, like, party guy, but a lot of people take that as he's dumb or stupid, and Michelangelo's not, so... I could live with the stupid portrayals of Mikey, but in the 2014 movie where it's like creepy, perverted Michelangelo, I'm like... That's weird. I'll take... Yeah, I'll take the stupid Mikey I'll over take this. A, yeah, I'd rather he be dumb than creepy and perverted. Yeah, and I think with that trailer, I think that's kind of what they were trying to show us. Him just kind of like throwing that Mikey away. So I, I think that trailer did some good things. And you can also notice that now Will Arnett is a, is a third wheel. Yeah, I think they're all going to be third wheels. I mean, yeah. with Casey Jones, I'm sure April O'Neil is going to be a big part of it, but they're not going to try and shove her down their throats. Like, she's going to be a part of the ride and the fun. When you think about it, you think about Will Arnett's <laughs> character from the first movie. Totally, mm -hmm. sur sur uh, what's the word? Su superfluous? Yeah. Superfluous. Yeah. Totally superfluous. Uh, and you, it, you could take his character out of the movie and nothing would change. Like, yeah. it's still the same movie. He has no bearing on the plot whatsoever. So you wonder, why is he there? He's there 
to be the voice of the men in the audience. Well, he was also that's that, his that purpose. Awful in the movie. comedic relief as well. But. Sort of, but he he's mainly there to be like, hey guys, I think she's sexy too. Yeah, you know? there was a lot of that. And yeah, that's. I mean, he was the one who was checking out her ass when she was leaning out the window. But he's and... not a love interest. Now <laughs> she's going to have a love interest. Yeah. And so his his role is essentially over. They could have just not had him in the movie, and it would have been fine. Uh, it was interesting because we'd never seen his. I mean, again, like. With these, with the 2014 and the new one coming out, again, they're touching on all the 80s stuff. Like, you know, we've never seen his character in the movie before. He's only existed in the 80s cartoon. And so it was kind of interesting to see him the same way it's going to be interesting to see Bebop and Rocksteady. Now, he wasn't done well and he was a really crappy part of that movie, but mm. he was there and it's like, okay, well, we got him, but we didn't really want to see him. We wanted to see. Krang and Bebop and Rocksteady and with this movie we're going to see that so I got to admit I'm really interested in seeing that I don't have high hopes for the movie Casey Jones is kind of a letdown uh, Casey can, Jones looks like he just stepped out of a show on, on the CW I wouldn't know anything about that <laughs> uh, just a lot, of, a lot of sexy supermodel looking people Okay. Uh, and he takes that mask off and he's like hi yeah, you know, he's, like like, on oh, a, dear. he's on the superhero show isn't he is he? Yeah, I think he's like on the Green know. Arrow show or anything. Oh, I, okay. But, uh, I haven't seen that. So I, I read that on the Ninja Turtles forums because I'm a big geek. <laughs> <laughs> but because but, uh, that's what a Ninja Turtles... Not interested in anything currently geek, just what you're geeky about. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's the only reason I know that because I'm a big nerd and I get on the Ninja Turtles forums and <laughs> I, I read about this stuff and I post and... I'm just a big geek, but that's why he's here. That's why I call it a geek-ish podcast, yeah. you know. Because <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not into everything that's going on in the world. Well, so. that's that's what we do. Yeah. But we yeah, geek, geek about what we like. So. He's uh, he's the main character on like the Green Arrow show or something, and uh, mm. I'm just disappointed in Casey. Like he's too much of a pretty boy. He's like too clean and nice, and Casey Jones is supposed to be like this vigilante, basically homeless kind of a nutball yeah I mean not as much as he was in the 80s cartoons in the 80s cartoon he was just completely out there but he is just kind of like this crazy guy who just goes out and like fights crime on his own and I think in this movie he's supposed to be like a an ex cop or something who decides to take you know justice yeah. into his own hands but you know he's not long haired he's not you know this yeah. wacky guy he's just kind of like you know Joe Average I guess yeah so, I mean... Thank God for Elias Codius. Yeah. yeah. If, you, if you want the great Casey Jones, there you go. I mean, just watch that first 1990 movie. If you want, like, a great, pretty definitive Ninja Turtles experience... And the only thing we know about him in that movie is that he used to be a, a hockey, hockey player. player. Yeah. That's it. That's pretty much it. <laughs> I mean, if, if you want... If you're not familiar with Ninja Turtles or if you're kind of interested in looking into it and you're not sure where to start... Watch that first movie because that that first movie it's it's a great comic book movie, it's a great movie. There's so much about it that is really well done from the look and tone of it. It's dark and gritty. It's violent. You know, you've got a lot of adult humor in it, but it's also okay for kids to watch. Uh, it you know the effects are great. The animatronics for the turtles like. I watch that movie now, and I still totally believe... It's a solid movie. It, it's definitely solid. Uh, you know, if you want a great Turtles experience, watch that first movie, because I, I can't recommend it enough. It's yeah. just a really good movie. And the sequels, I mean, you can you can go either way you want about those, but that first movie is really excellent. Yeah, the, the second movie's fine. It goes into kind of stupid territory. It has some great lines, though. It yeah, has, it's, it's some really funny lines. So the the part where they're in the uh, they're going to save Raphael. Yeah, and they was like, it's a little quiet around here. Yeah, a little too quiet. And then they beat a couple of the foot. It's a little too like, easy. That was a little too easy. And then they find Raph, and he's like, oh look, it's Raph. And he's like, yeah, a little too Raph. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's there's great stuff in that second movie too. Yeah. The second movie is definitely. It's definitely sillier, and mm -hmm. it's definitely more childish. It has some funny lines in it like that, though. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. It. It's still got some great witty writing, mm -hmm. and it's definitely worth a watch. It's not a great follow-up, but it's... The, only, the problem is that they're, you know, they're hardly using their weapons, and they're fighting with sticks of salami and yeah. yo-yos, and it's like, oh. Well, that's the thing. Like, because that first movie was, like, an independent movie with not a lot of studio interference, because <laughs> no studio wanted to make that first movie, but after it was such a huge hit... 
they immediately said, okay, we got to do a sequel, kind of like the new one. They yeah. started that sequel really quick. But with that original series of movies, the first movie was a hit. They wanted a sequel, but there were problems with the first movie. They got a lot away with a lot more because it was independent. They could have it be dark and gritty. They could have it be more violent. They could get away with the cursing. Yeah. And and then when the studio came in and took over, yeah, they're it like, okay, a well, completely different thing. Yeah, we can't have the cursing. Mm -hmm. We got to have the movie be brighter. The what, turtles can't use their weapons. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, there was a lot of stuff working against that movie, but it's still it's still a fun watch. It's not horrible like the third one. Third, I was about to say <laughs> the third one. You know, the third one isn't really that bad because it has. Um, well, I guess this doesn't make or break the movie, but I, I like, uh, I can't remember the guy's name. I like him so much that I can't remember his name. <laughs> Stuart something. Ah, you got me. I barely remember the I, movie. I don't remember. Well, his, he, he's been a villain in a lot of movies. He's a British actor. He was in Hot Fuzz. He was in, okay. he was the villain in Lethal Weapon 3. Okay. Uh, he uh -huh. was the villain in No Escape, if you remember that movie. The name's familiar, but him I don't think Him and Ray Liotta I... stuck on an island, and he's the bad guy. Yeah, that sounds familiar. Yeah, yeah. Wasn't, I never saw it. That but... wasn't a well-received movie either, but <laughs> he was great in it. Okay. Uh, but, yeah, uh, him being in it kind of makes that movie a little bit for me. Of course, I liked it when I was a kid. But then I grew up and realized it's not a very good movie. But it does have one over on the second movie in that the turtles actually use their weapons. True. The entire movie. Very true. You know. I have a weird thing with the third Turtles movie because I saw that movie in theaters as a kid. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you're a kid, you go to a movie and you're, you're kind of accepting of a lot of stuff. You yeah. know, you're a kid. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. seeing a Ninja Turtles movie. Exactly. What could be wrong with that? I have, and, this, I have had this conversation so many times with Teresa where it's yeah. like, you know, you... You watch a movie when you're a kid, and you have no bearing on whether or not it's a good movie or a bad right. movie. It's just a movie. You might not like it, but it's not, oh, that was bad. Oh, that was bad. It's just a movie. Yeah. And, and it doesn't, until you start getting older and you just start forming opinions about things. Oh, no. Well, this is where <laughs> this is where my weird thing with the third Turtles movie comes in, because that's when I first realized that I was seeing a bad movie. Mm. And it's, again, I'm a kid in the movie theater watching a Ninja Turtles movie. I should be going crazy and having a blast but I was sitting there like wow this movie's I'm not having fun I'm not liking this and it was it was really just one of those weird eye-opening experiences where I'm just like I'm seeing a bad movie but not only that I'm seeing a bad Ninja Turtles movie like how is that possible yeah and and I think it for me you were talking about that I think for me it was either the Lost World the second oh. Jurassic Park movie or Batman and Robin one of those Ooh. or it dawned on me that this is not good I, I well, don't, you know, Batman and Robin, it's too blatantly obvious that's a bad movie. Yeah. But I mean, after but, seeing like the Burton movies and even to a lesser extent, Batman Forever, mm -hmm. nobody could have expected that movie to be what it was. Well, right off the bat, they've cast Arnold Schwarzenegger as one of the villains. And I'm like, are you going for campy? You know, sorry, I was just la I was laughing to myself at the joke you just said because you, you were like, right off the bat. Huh? Ah, see, yeah, see right off there? the bat. Ah. <laughs> Yeah, I saw that movie at the Dollar Theater, and I didn't even stay till the end. Was it was worth just, a dollar? No, no. And they spent a lot of dollars on that movie, but yeah. it wasn't worth even a penny. Yeah. It's just a bad movie. Yeah, that was pretty bad. I'm surprised that uh, you had that experience, kind because that's later. That was like, what, 97, 98? Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm saying. I, I, didn't, I don't know if I saw it in theaters. Teresa asked me about that in a previous podcast, I think. Hmm. I don't remember if I saw that in theaters. I know I didn't see Batman Forever in theaters, and I was upset with my mom over that, because I, I, I really wanted to go see it and never did. I saw all of them in theaters, except for like the Nolan ones. I um, saw all the Nolan ones, yeah. yeah. I, I saw a double feature of Batman Begins with Land of the Dead. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it was very strange. Yeah, feature. that's weird. Um, I saw The Dark Knight and The Dark Knight Rises in theaters, but I didn't see Batman Begins just because I, I didn't care. I saw The Dark Knight uh, at midnight, uh, the, you know, the day it came out. Mm -hmm. Like, it was the midnight screening of it, the opening screening of it, and it's the only time I've ever done anything like really? that. Really? Oh. Yeah. I just thought, I'd never done it before, and like, let's just try it, let's see what happens. And wow. We showed up like two hours early, and we were the first people in line, there was a line, Yeah. and so we got the best seats and everything. It was it was great. It was sort of like a religious experience where you go and you see a really good movie with a really uh, cool crowd. Well, I think the, you know, I think the fun thing about doing those early screenings, I love to do them, and this, I think one of the fun things about it is that you're seeing it 
with your people. Like these are the people yeah, that exactly. are so into it. Yeah. They want to be there for the first showing. Right. And you're kind of there with people who are not going to be crappy or annoying because they're there for the same reason you right. are. They want to yep. see that movie. You wait like opening weekend. You see it like on a Saturday or a Sunday. People are probably not going to be like as into it as they would like those first screenings. And that's what's kind of fun about it. You're kind of seeing it with your people. Yeah. Um, I've seen some of the X-Men movies for those early screenings. I saw that uh, fourth Indiana Jones movies, <laughs> uh, fourth Indiana Jones movie, and that wasn't a fun experience. But you were there with people who love this series. There was a guy dressed as Indiana Jones. There is stuff in that Crystal Skull movie that's, it's it's not worth it to make it, but there's still stuff in it to appreciate. I can't even really remember much of anything about like, that There's movie. some pretty good little things in it. Like I said, it doesn't make the movie, right. but there's stuff in there where you're like, okay, that was all right. All well, right, that's okay. But then after that, you're just like, this is horrible. Having Marion back was awesome. I just wish she could have done more. Yeah. She didn't, she didn't really have anything to do. Yeah, that was kind she of was, a She was just there to introduce, and it's like, this is your son. That, yeah. And after that, she has, she has no purpose, really. Yeah, she really doesn't do much, which sucks because Marion was such a cool character. Mm -hmm. I mean, she... Feisty, plucky, independent woman. She was tough. I mean, she was a great... Uh, she was a great, like, partner for Indy. Like, mm -hmm. they just... They just worked on I so many levels. And, yeah, I mean, she's one of the coolest characters in that series, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, I rank her right up there with Indy. Like, if I had to rank my favorite Indy characters, it would be Indy, Marion... Uh, Indy's dad, uh, Sala. <laughs> I noticed you're leaving out someone intentionally. Uh, I like Sala, but no, 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 that's not who I was thinking of. Brody, no. Marcus Brody. No. Uh oh. Uh, what is his name? Belloc. No. Uh, Molaram. <laughs> you're way off the mark. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I think I might be doing that intentionally. Willie Scott, dude. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let, let's not talk about her. Okay. <laughs> I thought it was an intentional thing. I really did. Oh, I forgot Short Round. Short Round. Short Round's cool. Well, time for love, Dr. Jones. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why Short Round gets so much crap. I like Short Round. I liked him, too. I, I don't understand why people didn't like him. He's fun. He's, he's way better than Shia LaBeouf. Yeah. I, I, you know what? In Crystal Skull, I kind of wish it was a grown-up short round instead of... Uh, yeah, that would make more sense. Right? That would have been cool. Yeah. Where's where, What happened to him Like in all those years? Where did he end up? Sweatshop. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, good night. <laughs> oh, that's horrible. Oh, man. But, yeah, you know, with these new movies, it's it's really difficult to get excited about them because they could go either way, and the way things are going it seems like they're all just going to go downhill. Mm. And, you know, with X-Men, with the very lackluster reactions we both had to it, you know, and Ninja Turtles, and I can't remember... There seems, the you know, but there seems to be a trend where the people that are making the Marvel movies, they get it. They understand what people want out yeah. of these movies. Yeah. People that are making the Turtles movies, they don't get it. They're just like, oh, they want more characters, but they still want to make the same crappy movies. They don't want to put any kind of character into it, or they don't want to put anything with any real grit or any real substance into it. Yeah. They, they just, oh, they like, they like those characters. Okay, let's shove more in, and maybe they'll like these movies better. Well, filmmaking is very different from what it used to be. I mean, we were, Absolutely. Talking, we were talking earlier about how uh, I get really bummed out because you don't have movies starring people like... John Candy and Rick Moranis anymore where mm. you could have uh, these guys be the main leads of a movie nowadays you can't have any like kind of schlubby guys like that uh, I mean you might have like your Will Ferrells and you know what's the fat guy from Superbad uh, oh, Jonah uh, Hill yeah. yeah and it's like okay yeah these are schlubby guys too but they're not funny they're not charismatic no. they're not they're not like you know John Candy and Rick Moranis and like the John Belushi's of the world like these guys oozed character and charisma. You like them. They were charming. They were uh, hilarious. They, it, that's, that's, it seems like you would hang out with these people. Yeah, right? they didn't need to be loud and obnoxious because to, to be funny, a lot of comedy now is just like, oh, we need to be loud and crass and obnoxious. And it's mm -hmm. just like, no, ha have jokes. Have, you need to have some wit. Yeah, yeah. and these, none of these guys have that. No. 
the Judd Ap- these Judd Apatow movies that they keep making, and I and people keep t- maybe it's a generational thing too. It is. Uh, you, you know, I just I don't understand the appeal of most of these movies. I don't either. Uh, I I've kind of given up on current comedy. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, hell, I'll sit here and I'll watch my Laurel and Hardy DVD box set for hours on end, laughing hysterically. Hell, I'll watch Tom and Jerry cartoons, and I'll laugh out loud at what's going on. Oh, yeah. If I watch a current comedy movie, I'm just kind of sitting there with just like, well, this isn't very funny. It's just obnoxious and annoying. And But then uh, you then every now, once in a while, something <clears throat> comes out of the woodwork, like what we do in the shadows. Which I will watch this week, because I have watch not seen that. <laughs> Thank you, by the way. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, I We brought him a copy of that. <laughs> uh but yeah, you, you have stuff like that that pop up every now and then that is just like really great. Um, what was the Cabin in the Woods, which def- technically wasn't a comedy, but I laughed a lot. Very, it. it was very satirical. Yeah. I mean, it, that worked in its favor, and that was a great flick. I, I enjoyed the hell out of that movie. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, movie, is, movie making has changed. Not really for the better, but there is good stuff out there. Uh, you just gotta. Yeah. You've really gotta search for it now. That's, yeah. that's the problem is. You know, 30 years ago, you had like, or even 40 years ago or something like that, you'd have like two or three movies come out a month and you could see them, you could see them all unless you were going to the independent places, Mm -hmm. independent theaters and seeing those movies. There wasn't a whole lot on television. Yeah. And there wasn't, there was just less, there was less to sort through. Yeah, there's too much now. It's like every week there's another blockbuster and it's in theaters for maybe not even a month and then it's gone it's like everything is just so manufactured and disposable it's like let's yeah. get this out let it make its money let's throw it on dvd so people can buy it while it's still fresh in their minds and then we'll move on to the next crap we can dump out into theaters and it's pick and choose too because if you have a bad experience with say a marvel film mm-hmm. you probably won't watch any more of them and you'll go look at something else because you, your time is devoted to things that you like yeah you know so it's you know when we look at the summer i mean we had you know, Mad Max, and then immediately after that, it was like Avengers, and then it was Jurassic World, and mm-hmm. then it was Terminator, and it was just like whatever else crap came out this summer. It's just right. like let the stuff breathe and be what it is. But I mean, that's just not what it is anymore. It's a product, and yeah. a lot it of it is. It really is. Yeah. So that's why you know you want some good stuff out there. Uh, go see like Kumiko the Treasure Hunter, or Ex Machina, or you know Fury Road. <sighs> Yes, see Fury Road. Fury Road was Fury, fucking amazing. Yeah, best one of the best movies I've seen all year. And people get, you know, it's funny, now that it's out there in, in, in the world, everybody keeps saying, there was CGI in that movie. And I'm like, nobody said there wasn't any CGI in it's that movie. It's the fact that it was, it was used the way CGI should be used to enhance, enhance instead of make the actual movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, everybody thinks CGI is what we need to make movies, and it's not. It's... You need that to enhance aspects of the movie. Yeah. But yeah. it's like Dash versus Evil Dead, you know. Which yeah. We haven't talked about, but you yeah, know. we'll have to do that sometime. We'll have to, maybe have to do that. <laughs> Evil Dead podcast. Evil Dead episode. podcast. Yeah. Um, they use CGI on that show, and sometimes it makes me wince. But. Yeah, but thankfully, a lot of it's practical. Like there's real blood in yeah. that show, and yeah. nobody does real blood anymore, which is horrible. And the fact that they've got real blood splattering all over these characters that alone makes me happy the last episode that i watched was kelly took the waitress's face and just shaved it over a meat slicer yeah i was laughing so hard it's just like this is ridiculous and it's great that show's great (laughs) that that show's fantastic too and it's again because they're kind of taking a old school route you know they've got fun characters they've got practical effects they've got an interesting story for the most part. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just expanding on yeah. the Evil Dead lore. But yeah, they need to expand it a little bit. That's my only beef with that show is that, um, really, is that it, it feels very narrow sometimes. Yeah. And it needs, it needs to broaden a little bit. I think it will with the second yeah. season. I mean, I think wherever this first season's heading to, it's going to just open doors for what's going to come next. Yeah. So I'm, I'm okay with this kind of slow burn <clears throat> of a first season. And, and that's also my other complaint is that the episodes are way too short. Yeah. 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 It, it's like... It you've got to be an hour long. Yeah, yeah. You've got crap like Walking Dead that goes for 40 or 50 minutes long, mm-hmm. but Ash vs. Evil Dead is only like 25 minutes. I guess the mentality is um, leave them wanting more. 
Well, they definitely do because every time an episode yes. finishes, I'm like, you know, if this minute, if this show, episode had like another twenty minutes to like expand a little bit more on some of the stuff that's going mm-hmm. on, this would be even more amazing than it already is. Yeah. But it's just amazing that we get we get more Evil Dead anything starring true. Bruce, Bruce Campbell. Yeah. You know that's very true, and I'm not complaining about that. No, that's not a bad thing. Yeah, definitely not. Okay. I guess we can call it there. We've yeah. talked for about an hour. I, I think, think that's pretty good. Yeah. Gone on plenty of tangents. We've gone. Already. We've gone off on different tangents. Mainly the turtles trailer. Well, which is the main thing. If you get me started on turtles, I won't stop. I can I know. go on <laughs> about. We didn't even touch on some of the like CGI movie, the VHS specials. I mean, there's just so much. The toys, oh, yeah, the, the comics, uh, the, the uh, um, <laughs> concert. Yeah. I still got that tape somewhere. I do too. I have. Yeah. I have it in a box of VHS tapes in my closet. <laughs> But I have the, the cassette that they put out. They put it out on cassette. Yeah. Is, the, they the, didn't put it out on CD, which is weird. Yeah, but some of those songs are pretty bad, too. Yeah. Skipping Stones. <laughs> Splinter's song about skipping stones. I remember my dad liked that song. <laughs> I don't know why. He's uh, like, that's a pretty good song. And I'm like, okay. Okay, sure. Dad. <laughs> you're, you're not cool. <laughs> <laughs> you're quite trying to be cool. Maybe that's what it was. He was maybe. just trying to be cool in my eyes Maybe. Or something. I don't know. But... Thanks for having me on. Man. Yeah, no fun. problem. I enjoyed it. We'll do it again sometime. Cool. Uh, cool. Ne- next week, uh, we'll probably um, be talking about Star Wars, so we won't need you. Yeah. I'll, <laughs> yeah, I, I won't have anything to contribute to that no. conversation. Teresa, Teresa and I, are, are like most of the people in the world, are going to go see Force Awakens this weekend. Uh, Saturday. I'm not seeing it at opening day. I just... I don't want the hassle. Yeah. It may be a hassle anyways. I don't know. We'll I'm see. sure it will. I'm seeing a, we're seeing a matinee, so hopefully it won't be too bad. But anyways, uh, we'll pick this up again next week. Uh, we'll talk about The Force Awakens and Star Wars and whatever else we feel like talking about. Uh, until then, uh, I'm Tim. Um, I'm Chris. And uh, I'll see you next week. See ya. See ya.